Hey guys, first time traveling to Denmark. Excited to see the new hearing aid technology that Oticon's been working on. Let's go. So I've been eagerly awaiting this trip for the past several months to get a sneak peek at Oticon's new Zeal hearing aid. From everything I've seen so far, it looks like this new ready-to-wear style could finally be an in-the-ear equivalent of a receiver in the ear hearing aid that has dominated the hearing aid market for more than a decade due to its comfort, performance, and versatility. But until I get to experience it for myself, the jury is still out. The Oticon Zeal is a discreet, wireless, and rechargeable hearing aid that can be fit with either a rubber dome or a custom ear mold. It's powered by Oticon's Sirius chip that uses the same second-generation artificial intelligence deep neural network as their extremely popular Oticon Intent mini right hearing aid. When we arrived in Denmark, I met up with Dr. Virginia Ramachandran, VP of Audiology at Oticon USA, and headed over to Oticon's headquarters on the outskirts of Copenhagen. And despite my expectations that it would be raining the entire trip, it ended up being a pretty beautiful day. We kicked everything off by grabbing some coffee to fight off the jet lag and getting a quick tour of the facility with Karina Nielsen. Now you may or may not remember the release of the Oticon Open hearing aid back in 2016, but during that release they used a VR headset to immerse you in the experience of the Open Sound Navigator technology. And in true Oticon form, I got to have another 3D virtual reality experience of the new Zeal technology, and I have to say five stars would definitely recommend. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. You can take off the, right the glasses. You sure he's not coming back around again? <laughs> <laughs> you want to know? You want another round? <laughs> Speaking of the Oticon Open, I received a history lesson on the development of Oticon's chipset technology dating back to 2006, well before I was an audiologist. And what I learned is that the exponential advancement of this technology is mind blowing. Going from 8.6 million transistors on a single chip to over 154 million transistors on the Sirius chip inside of the Oticon Zeal that is even smaller in size. That's how this looks right now. So this is latest generation. Uh -huh. Any questions? <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, that was great. That was great. All right, guys, so I hope you don't mind me stepping outside here with you. I wanted to keep this a little bit more casual because I did not have any footage of these next two areas of Oticon headquarters because they are top secret. But let me go ahead and tell you what I saw. First and foremost, the amount of machining that goes into manufacturing a pair of Oticon hearing aids is insane. You have to remember, when Oticon creates a completely new hearing aid that's never been created before, they don't even have the tools to create it, which means that they have to invent the tools to make the new hearing aid. And when you're walking through a facility like this, it almost seems impossible that they would be able to make hearing aids that are this small with that amount of precision that's required. And I can't even begin to imagine the amount of financial commitment that would be required to acquire all of this equipment that they had inside of the production room. And after our minds were thoroughly blown, we made our way over to the quality control room. This is basically where they take all of the new hearing aid designs, including the Oticon Zeal, and try to make them fail. It's actually pretty funny to see all of the different torture devices that they create create to try to break their own hearing aids. And if they can't make their hearing aids fail, then they're good to go. After our tour, we met up with Oticon leadership to get a high level overview of their five year journey developing the Zeal. Objective was to make the smallest hearing aid with as much functionality as possible. Uh, so that's basically it. And we have managed to do that. Essentially, they wanted to create a hearing aid that could do everything a receiver in the ear hearing aid could do, but without it having to go behind your ear. It had to be small so it could discreetly fit inside of your ear. It had to have the performance of a receiver in the ear hearing aid. It had to be wireless for app controls and LE audio Bluetooth streaming, including AuraCast. It had to be rechargeable and it had to be durable because it literally lives inside of your ear. And one of the big reasons that they were able to achieve this is their new encapsulation technique. This is where the internal components of the device are built to be as small as humanly possible and then pouring the outer shell around these components to seal them in. This is similar to how a mosquito gets trapped inside of some tree sap that turns to amber, preserving it for millions of years. And then of course using that mosquito to bring dinosaurs back to life. Then you have the wireless antenna that acts like a retention filament and a removal string that you can hardly see inside of your ear when you're wearing it. If I'm being honest, at this point, all I really wanted to do was just get my hands on the actual devices myself. And that is exactly what we got to do. Both my wife Ashley and I got to experience the Oticon Zeal for ourselves. First, they performed the audible contrast threshold test on us. This is a background noise test where you listen for a siren sound among background noise so they can determine our hearing and noise value to use when programming our Zeal hearing aids. 
Now, sure, Ashley's score may have been a little bit better than mine, but remember, this is not a competition, unless, of course, my score was better, then it would have definitely been a competition. Now, just to be clear, you do not need to do the audible contrast threshold test to program these devices, but it does give your hearing care provider an additional piece of information to help in prescribing the right amount of noise reduction for you. Now, during the fitting, I tested the Zeal with both a rubber dome fit and a custom ear mold fit. How's it feeling? Feels good. Good? Yeah. For me, the custom ear mold fit was better, surprisingly giving me plenty of amplification for this extremely small hearing aid. Ashley, on the other hand, was able to successfully use a rubber dome to get the amount of amplification that she needed. Of course, after playing around with the programming software for a bit that I am extremely familiar with due to my experience with the Oticon Intent hearing aids, the only non-negotiable that I had is that we had to perform real ear measurement to ensure that I was hitting my hearing loss prescriptive targets. Which, not gonna lie, I was pretty surprised we were able to do with a hearing aid that is this small. That being said, what are my thoughts about the Oticon Zeal? Well, honestly, I was pretty impressed. Never would I have thought that I could get this much amplification out of a device this small and get a similar type of sound quality that I would expect from an Oticon receiver in the ear hearing aid. But of course, we were not finished yet. Next, it was time to test out the wireless connectivity to see if the Bluetooth antenna actually worked as well as Oticon claimed. We were able to connect the Oticon Zeals to a Google Pixel phone using Google's FastPair. This gave me the ability to stream audio from the phone, make program and volume adjustments, and give me access to AuraCast. Now, if you're unfamiliar with AuraCast, this is a new form of wireless audio that allows anyone with AuraCast-enabled hearing aids like the Zeal to tap into a public venue AuraCast audio system. And I was able to experience AuraCast for the first time using the Zeal hearing aids. I'm using AuraCast right now. Kind of trippy. It's like right in my head. I'm gonna see how far I can get away from the transmitter. Not only did the AuraCast signal sound great, but I was almost able to walk into an entirely different building and maintain a strong crystal clear connection. Right here, just lost it. And so it's trying to reconnect to the broadcast and see if it automatically kicks back in. And we're back. That's pretty cool. In fact, I was so impressed that I even purchased an AuraCast transmitter for my office in Phoenix so my patients could experience it as well. Not a big fan of this guy. I really just don't get his content. It makes no sense. <laughs> I can knock out my microphones completely here. So now I have 100% or a cast signal. And then I can bring on the microphones again. And now I can hear some of it in the room and have it stream through my ears. So, and then I can even adjust the streaming equalizer on it here as well to make it sound however I want it to sound, which is fun. Disconnect, off immediately. I like how there's no lag there. It's a little bit, so when I tap into it, takes a second that that was like one second and it's going both ears instantly that's cool this thing is amazing <laughs> after several hours of wearing learning about and testing the zeal myself Oticon interviewed me on my first impressions and might I say quite impressed with these never before seen hearing aids I just wish they would have let me take them home with me Gotta admit, we were pretty exhausted after a long first day, so we took the night off and regrouped for day number two. The next day, we took a nice little drive to the countryside where we arrived at Eric's Home Research Center. All right, so we are at Eric's Home Research Center on the, I'll say, the outskirts of Copenhagen, uh, Denmark, but uh, perfect fall day. It's actually really foggy, not raining on us yet. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if it starts raining here soon, so let's go ahead and get inside. Eric's home was established in 1976 when Oticon sent a group of engineers to focus on long-term applied hearing research that could be used to create new hearing aid technologies. There I met with James Hart, Senior Director of Eric's Home, and Principal Scientist Dorothea Wendt, who gave me an overview of research that they are currently conducting in the areas of cognitive hearing science, intent decoding, personalized audiology, and artificial intelligence. Now, don't get me wrong, talking about research is fun, but what's even more fun is getting a tour of the research labs and even having a chance to participate in several experiments that led to technologies like the Oticon Zeal and Intent. And you'd be pretty surprised with how much they're evaluating both ears and eyes to get an inside look at how your brain reacts to sound and your intent when listening. Finally, I had a chance to meet with Claus Nielsen, senior researcher at Eric's home and curator of the in-house hearing aid collection and history of Oticon. Have a look at that one. <laughs> and look carefully at it because what you're looking at there is a microphone from 1910. It's a US microphone. Uh -huh. And the little one that I've stuck on top of it is uh, 100 years 
This is the inside of a you know, vacuum tube hearing aid. Oh yeah. This is actually the first real uh, Oticon hearing aid. The next one I want to show you is actually this hearing aid. And if you look carefully at it, you can see that it looks a little funny in the, in the hook part. Uh -huh. It has a double snout, the front part of, of the hook, but the other part is actually a microphone opening. Ah, so when okay. you stick that on the ear, you will have the microphone opening sitting here. The idea is actually pretty good at least in theory, because you would get closer Pin to the Pin effect there. There yeah. you go. When speaking with Claus, I could get a sense of just how much Otakon embraces their own history, dating back to 1904, when founder Hans de Mont started the company as a way to help his wife Camilla, who had hearing loss herself. Claus walked me through generations of Otakon hearing aid technology, breaking out some of their most innovative designs, many of which I have never seen before. Even noting some of their unsuccessful designs along the way that were a result of Otakon pushing the boundaries of what's possible over the years. Ultimately, this gave me a much deeper appreciation of how far Otakon hearing aid technology has come over the past 120 plus years. I couldn't help but think about the Otakon zeal eventually finding itself on this wall, marking its spot in history as the first discrete in-the-ear hearing aid with AI sound processing that's rechargeable, wireless, and that has the potential to be fit the same day. As my trip came to a close, it became quite clear to me how Oticon was able to lead the charge into AI and deep neural network sound processing, and how they're able to develop some of the world's best hearing aid technology. I walked away from this visit at Oticon's headquarters and Eric's home research center with a new sense of excitement, not just for the Oticon zeal, but for everything Oticon's cooking up for the future. All right, guys, that is it for the video. As you can see, it finally started raining on us out here in Copenhagen, Denmark at Oticon headquarters. I just want to give a huge shout out to Oticon for being such gracious hosts and taking me through personally all of their new innovations and the new product here. If you guys want to see my full detailed review, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel with notifications turned on. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.